how does it feel to be on such a critically acclaimed show now on its fifth season? It feels amazing. It feels yeah, great. Right. It feels like a badge of honor. Sometimes I feel like I wish uh, um, the expense would be my legacy. Because mm. we've done so much on this series. Never had a chance to do six uh, seasons on, on a series. So I, and uh, it just got better and better and better and better. And because of the fact that my, our writers are amazing, the novels are out of this world. And interesting enough that it has not received even one bad review. All the reviews are amazing. But my favorite one comes from a scientist who says, this is the most accurate version of the future. Pay attention to it. Don't uh, keep polluting our oceans or our air. This is where we are gonna arrive at if we're not careful today. So, uh, you know, the production, the I, I can write a book about this. <laughs> and I have worked 48 years and I have not seen anything like this where everything is good, everybody is nice. Production, crew, cast, I mean, it's, when, when a story wants to be told in a right way, this happens. So over the course of these seasons, um, how have you seen uh, your character develop? Let's, Kara, how have you seen your, like, evolve or change? Well, I think it's actually, it's been very, very interesting to, um, to track Drummer's arc through, uh, we imagine that her backstory comes from uh, one of the novellas um, in the Expanse universe called um, The Butcher of Anderson Station. And that is a story about how Fred Johnson was flipped uh, to become a member of the OPA. And in that story, uh, you see Dawes and he has uh, a, a woman with him, basically with a gun to Fred's head <laughs> Fred the whole time. And we imagined that that was Drummer. And so knowing that that's where she has come from to, to be, you know, of course, uh, Fred's second in command on Tycho Station, um, uh, having worked her way up through those ranks as well, uh, to that really awesome position. She has such a powerful feeling for her fellow belters, for the power of the OPA, um, and of course, fighting for her people's sovereignty. Uh, all of that gets uh, shaken up pretty much right away, of course, when a bioweapon is introduced and the universe changes before our very eyes. And so she shifts, she shifts along the way and we get to see how she adapts to the changing situation, of course, as we go through the ring, everything's different with Ashford and the behemoth, everything changes again. And then right before season five has started, she has parted ways, she cracks Fred Johnson across the face. Um, which was extremely important to shoot, by the way. I took boxing classes for a month, so I would look cool when I did it. <laughs> um, and, you know, she said, I can't, these, the, this, the OPA no longer aligns with my values, you know? Mm -hmm. So she's on her own and with a new crew who I can't wait for everyone to meet because there's like the dreamiest group of people who I'm so excited for the world to meet and who also as humans were much, much, much better than I am at taking magazines uh, <laughs> photos. So I feel like there's like a whole world of behind the scenes that no one's ever seen and, and will will see. Um, mm. And I think for the first maybe 30 seconds of season five, Drummer is happy. Of course, all that is uh, ripped away from her <laughs> <laughs> moments in. <laughs> Yeah, that's her. That's, that's her. Terry, there is no other way but evolve in this that's it. big, vast world. It's interesting. Every time our director um, calls for a uh, cut and wants to repeat the scene, usually on the third time, the director will come in and say, I'm terribly sorry, but there was a technical. And I, I keep telling them, there is no need to apologize because we can only get better. If one is not bigoted and would understand that one has made a mistake, then obviously the next time one tries, we'll do a better job. We can only get better. So there is no way but evolve, especially for people, for creative people who want, who see the future and wants to take a part in it, in shaping it. There is no other way but evolve. Were um, either of you, were, without giving any spoilers away, were either of you really surprised by the developments of the fifth season? Did anything kind of shock you maybe? I had read the book. Mm. 
So I, I which I all, I think I would encourage everyone to read the books before, after, it doesn't matter. There's another window into the same story and it just totally enriches the experience. Um, so I wasn't shocked by the events, but of course the way it plays out is slightly different, of course, in the TV show. We get to see different perspectives that we don't get to see in the novels. Um, no, I wasn't shocked. I was, I wasn't shocked. It's interesting. I haven't read the books, unlike, uh, and I'm, I'm so happy we can read it. Unfortunately, when I started reading it, I realized that I don't want to know about the future. <laughs> I don't want to know what happens to Alice World. In real life, if someone tells me that I'm going to die in three months, all my life is going to change. I, I wouldn't act the same way. So I decided, I, I bought all the books, they're here, but I decided that the day we're done with the last season of it, then I would sit down. And I'm sure when I start reading it, I would feel sorry for certain moments, not being aware of what was behind the scene all, you know. But uh, I haven't read it yet. But by experience, I wasn't shocked. Abbasarola wasn't shocked. She was expecting this one way or another. She's always afraid of the predators, those who want to, uh, you know, take uh, Earth resources and use Earth as, as their you know, headquarters. She's always afraid of them. But uh, that's why I, w I wasn't thoroughly shocked. I'm waiting for the next season. See if, I, see if they can really make me feel shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so there appears to be a lot of drinking in outer space. Like, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what you do on a spaceship, like quarantine. <laughs> Um, with the holidays coming up, is there a specific cocktail? It can be non-alcoholic drink that maybe you're into for the holiday season. <laughs> sun kissed. <laughs> yeah. We go with sun kissed. Nice. Yes. Um, well, I'm, I love a mixture. I, I wasn't joking. I love a mixture of vodka and sun kissed. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Okay. Kara, <laughs> anything for you? I uh, am um, breastfeeding an infant, so no, but thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Actually, you know what's interesting? I'm glad you asked that, truly, because um, uh, there is uh, a, a little bit of an Easter egg in the season with the, uh, the whiskey. Um, I think it's, it's called McGlenton's. Yes. <laughs> and, Glenton is one of the uh, incredible writers on our show. So that is a little shout out to him. 